Tom here from Lawrence Systems. On August 8th of 2022, Unify Network Application 7.2.92 was released. Today is August 22nd of 2022, and I don't have any problems to report with it, so I would recommend you load this version, but let's narrow in scope how we use Unify Network Application. I do not have this loaded because we do not install Unify Dream Machines at any of the businesses that we manage. Therefore, I have not done extensive testing with these on the Unify Dream Machine. Also, this USG routers, we just don't use them. And so I haven't really done a lot of testing with that. This is related to the 50 plus clients that we have managed in our controller and some of the other controllers we updated for clients based on this version of the application, managing switches and managing access points and that's it. Now, I would say it's pretty stable. And this is always the first question when there's a major release version is how bad was it or was there a problem? And Unify has actually gotten a lot better overall. I've said this the last time, but a couple times ago, we were kind of watching these small incremental uh, updates to fix lots of broken things. I think they're going a little bit longer with some of the release cycles and their basically release candidates are out for a little bit longer. Now, most of these features we're going to be talking about were in the 7.2.91 release candidate. And when it went to 7.2.92 is when it went to full release and release candidate was out for about a month and a half or maybe a little bit longer with a lot of these features and that's the list we'll be pulling from because those are where the major changes came in before we dive into the details of this video let's first are you an individual or company looking for support on a network engineering storage or virtualization project is your company or internal IT team looking for someone to proactively monitor your system security or offer strategic guidance to keep your IT systems operating smoothly not only would we love to help consult on your project, we also offer fully managed or co-managed IT service plans for businesses in need of IT administration or IT teams in need of additional support. With our expert install team, we can also assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning projects. If any of this piques your interest, fill out our Hire Us form at lawrencesystems.com so we can start crafting a solution that works for you. If you're not interested in hiring us, but you're looking for other ways you want to support this channel, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And now back to our content. Now, I will leave all this link down below. Here is the Unify Network Application 7.2.92 official release, not release candidate. There's not a ton of changes here. This is just some bug issues because when you were at the release candidate of 7.2.91, this is where all the new features were rolled out and tested about a month ago. A lot of these features are going to be related to the Unify Dream Machine. A lot of enhancements they have done to that line of product. But as I said, we don't really deploy these commercially. We have done a lot of consulting and help a lot of people set them up, but we're not a common installer of these and we certainly don't manage them for a lot of businesses therefore i had a lot of these people update and didn't complain didn't have any problems didn't contact us just let us know they updated so i'm assuming it works pretty well our lab went perfectly fine doing this and there are a couple of highlights in here that are very specific to the dream machine which are features we've been asking for and that's going to be your wan load balancing essentially improving the reliability of wan failover events and there is a video link down below to Cody from MacTelcom Networks who did a video showing how this works. Open VPN client support, which also I have a video from Cody who shows how this works. And please note this says client, not server, because I did a recent video based on the latest update to how Unify weirdly implements, well, OpenVPN and some of the other services such as WireGuard and their teleport service. Now coming down here to bug fixes, there's a lot to digest here. There's a lot of little things that, well, add up to a lot of annoyances and they've done a good job of just knocking out, well, a lot of bugs. Once again, a lot of these are going to be things like fixed VPN server subnet size options. These are not issues we really run into because we don't use the Unifier routing equipment. But nonetheless, it's good to see that lots of these little complaints that people had have all been addressed and fixed, and there is quite a few in this list here. Now, one very welcome new feature in the UI is under the client devices. We go to display options and we go to columns. We have the ability to show which Wi-Fi networks are connected to, and then it's also a sortable network. So I can see that each of the devices that are connected at 2.4, Wi-Fi 4, network LTS Tom, the MIMO, the IP address, and then the Wi-Fi network that they're attached to. This is great. Now, interestingly, and I'm not sure why this isn't an option, I can't click on something like this and get right to the port that it's connected to without a second click. It would be nice if they could list out the port and maybe the device. Maybe it's just an ability to stretch the UI a little bit further um, is why they didn't do it. But hey, at least it's easy enough to be able to click on it and jump to a specific port. 
That being said, let's talk about that because this has also been enhanced a lot. And I really like the way they're doing the port management now and the insights. This UI is just nice. It is a nice way to look at, present, see things like being able to go, oh, okay, I can see this information about this particular port. You can check them right here. From a UI standpoint, I actually find this really nice. It just makes it easy to look at and see things and be actionable out them, assign a port profile. What is the operating mode? Mirror, aggregate, switching. Everything's just right here. We're selecting the exact port. And it's a nice touch too. And I'll zoom in a little, make them a little bigger to be able to see these icons and say, hey, look, this is the icon for the in-wall HD or one of the other access points on here and be able to say, oh, okay, I see what's exactly attached to there. So this is, to me, just really slick options. Then we have our port insights. So we can go here, look at the usage, PoE usage over time. This whole UI has just become really nice and really pretty. Now I do wanna jump over real quick to our Unified Dream Machine, which is running the latest one as well. I noticed they have the internet health right here. And this is kind of weird. Sometimes it, as, and I was waited a few seconds to make sure it did that. It sometimes tells me there's no internet, but there is. And I haven't figured out exactly what the trigger is that I'm not experiencing that much downtime, but occasionally it seems to think it's down. Now, granted, if you notice it is behind, and this may be part of the problem, it does not have a public IP assigned to it. It is behind another one of our firewalls and maybe being double natted causes it to stop being able to ping a couple of these. It by default pings Facebook, Google, and Twitter. So it gives you an idea of what the millisecond access is and a couple different major services to give you an idea of whether or not it's up. Now they have been enhancing and I do like the updates they've had and the way they're assigning things in here has become a lot better. But Q video I mentioned before where they still don't have all the proper VPN support that I would like to see. That's why I made that video on how they handle VPN with UID. Um, it's just not the best in my opinion. So you're so close. I'm hoping soon they will have it there. And uh, then I'll be doing an updated video that you finally have good VPN client support for when you want to remote into your system and that system being a unified dream machine. So my overall feelings on this Unify update, I don't see any reason not to do it. Please do a backup just in case there's a problem, but I haven't experienced any issues with all the clients that we have updating all the different systems, pushing out firmware to some of the things that needed firmware updates, some of the access points and switches. As I said, we haven't done a lot of testing with the routers or the Unified Dream Machines other than the lab ones that we tested and they seem to update fine and still work. But I think this update is worth loading. It's good to keep on the latest version of things. That way, if there's any problems or flaws, and there always is sometimes problems and flaws and knowing and understanding those and reporting them back to Ubiquity so that we can keep the ball moving forward, testing out these release candidates as they come so you can, you know, have a lab environment like we do where we sometimes test out release candidate stuff and before we roll it out to our production. This all helps the ecosystem get better. And for those of you wondering, does this happen in other spaces besides Ubiquity? Yes, many large enterprise companies. It's just, well, less well known because you won't find as many YouTubers talking about when insert name of enterprise firewall company has a flawed update that breaks a bunch of small UI elements, but doesn't take a company down. It barely even makes the news. So yes, this is just part of the complexity of software. But nonetheless, I am excited to see that they are still working on their layer three enhancements. I didn't really cover that in the video because I'm going to do a dedicated video on how layer three and the switching works inside of Ubiquity. It's uh, well, a little different the way they handle it and their documentation is less than great. Therefore, I plan to make a video on there. If there's any other particulars you want me to cover, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And if there's some problems that you had or things or features that you'd like me to focus on a little bit more, well, let me know in the comments down below or head over to forums for a more in-depth discussion. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.